the religion of self. There is a new religion in our world, and that is the religion of self. To be honest, this is not a new religion, for it has been around since the dawn of time, but the reason I refer to it as the new religion is that it is very rarely, if ever, looked at as a religion. The religion of self directly goes against the fundamental truth of Christian living. The very starting point of Christianity is death. It starts with the death of self. For you to have a relationship with Christ, you must die to self. Jesus Christ stated, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The phrase spoken by Jesus is a powerful call to discipleship found in the Gospels, notably in Matthew 16.24, Mark 8.34 and Luke 9.23. This statement encapsulates the essence of Christian commitment and the journey of faith. It is a call. It is a call to total commitment to Christ. Carrying one's cross signifies complete and unwavering commitment to follow Jesus, regardless of the cost. It means prioritizing Christ's teachings and his example above all else, including one's personal desires, ambitions, and even life plans. It means that even if the world hates you, you will still follow Christ. It means that if you have to stand alone, you will follow Christ. It means that even if your back is against the wall, you will follow Christ. It is a call to self-denial. The phrase, carry my cross and follow me, also implies the concept of denying oneself, letting go of self-centeredness and ego. It's about putting the needs of others and the work of God's kingdom above one's own personal interests and desires. It is a call not to live in the flesh, but to live in the spirit and in obedience to the word of God. The phrase, carry my cross and follow me, is about dying to self. It is self-denial. Jesus emphasized to his disciples the significance of taking up their cross, a symbol of death, and following him. He clearly stated that anyone who wishes to follow him must deny themselves. This denial involves a spiritual, symbolic, and even physical surrender of their lives, if necessary. This self-denial is not just a part of being a follower of Christ. It is essential. Jesus taught that those who try to preserve their earthly lives might ultimately lose their eternal lives, while those who sacrifice their lives for his sake will find eternal life. In the scriptures, dying to self is consistently presented as a non-negotiable aspect of the Christian life. However, in today's world, many profess Christianity, yet live contrary to its tenets. Some claim to be Christians, but continue to engage in fornication, theft, or unprovoked lying. This contradicts the essence of the new birth in Christ, Coming to Christ means seeing one's old life crucified with him and starting anew in obedience to his teachings. There must be a noticeable transformation in one's life upon accepting Christ. If one remains unchanged after professing faith in Christ, they are merely embracing a religion of self-deception. Being born again is about transformation, aligning one's likes and dislikes with God's, embracing what he loves, and rejecting what he hates. Being born again does not imply perfection at all times, but it does necessitate a fundamental change in one's life. Jesus spoke against lukewarm followers, those trying to live partly in their old life and partly in the new. Revelation 3:15 to 16. He warns that he will reject such half-hearted followers, this lukewarmness, which was characteristic of the Laodicean church, is also prevalent in many churches today. Being lukewarm often stems from a reluctance to die to self and fully commit to living for Christ. Therefore, death to self is not optional for Christians. It is a deliberate choice that leads to eternal life. True discipleship calls for a complete and unwavering commitment to Christ manifesting in a transformed life and abandonment of former ways. 2 Timothy 4, 3-4 KJV says, 
For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. This religion destroys many people's lives. A lot of people preach this religion, and I can tell you that pastors are preaching it too. Many motivational speakers today call themselves pastors and are planting this religion in the hearts of millions of people each week. Many motivational speakers completely disregard God and teach people to glorify themselves. We live in an age of self-glorification, an age of self-adoration. Everything is about me, me, me and I. It is about what I want. It is about what I need. It is about my desires. It is about my needs. I am the center of my life. I need to take care of myself. It is no coincidence that, as the religion of self has taken more and more prominence in our generation, the word selfie was introduced. Do you know what a selfie is, right? A selfie is a photograph that one has taken of oneself, typically taken with a smartphone or webcam and shared via social media. We live in an age of boasting. This is one of the reasons why we know we are in the last days. 2 Timothy 3.1.2 says, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Look at that one word, boasters. Society as a whole will be a society of boasters, and the perfect vehicle for this is social media. When you scroll through people's social media, all you see is people boasting, people exalting themselves, and people showing off their lives. We live in a generation of boasters. The majority of people only ever post positive things on their social media, only to boast. A picture of my new fancy office or workplace or here is a picture of my new car, which I paid tens of thousands for. Or here is a picture of my big house with my perfect family. Or here is a picture of my perfect gym physique, boasting, boasting. Very rarely do you see people posting negative things on social media. Very rarely will you see someone posting, here is a picture, I just lost my job. Or here is a picture of my family, we are smiling in this picture but we just finished having a massive argument. At its very core, a lot of people post to boast. We are living in an age of vanity. It's almost as if the 2 Timothy 3, 1, 2 were telling us that we would live in a world where people would be centered around themselves. This is the new religion, the religion of self. You do know that you, as an individual, can become a god to yourself in your own eyes. You can exalt yourself to a position that only God should hold in your life. You can exalt yourself to being a messiah in your own eyes. Remember, this is exactly what Satan did. Satan attempted to exalt himself. Isaiah 14 to 12, 14 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I could go as far as saying that the religion of self is satanic. The first sin, the first ever sin to be committed, is the religion of self. This sin is so heinous and insidious that it is a sin that was committed and caused war in heaven. The religion of self sidelines God completely. It is a religion that doesn't give glory to God. The religion of self is a religion that tells you that what you need in this life is not God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, but yourself. There is the poem Invictus by William Ernest Henley which states, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Are you really? Can you make your own heartbeat? Can you produce your own oxygen? Can you save your own soul? 
The religion of self is self-centered, and there is no one more self-centered than the devil. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what true doctrine teaches? Did Jesus come to earth to tell you that you need no one, not even God? Is that what the apostles preached, for which they even chose to die? Can you help yourself? Is that what the Bible preaches? John 15:5 KJV says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Psalm 121, 1-2, KJV states, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. You can do nothing without God. There is nothing that works on earth without God's knowledge. If anyone is telling you that you don't need anyone, or you are enough by yourself, or you don't need God, you are listening to the religion of self. The religion of self focuses on self and leaves God out of it. They may call it self-motivation, self-elevation, or self-development. Whatever they call it, it is not approved by God. God should be at the center of all that you do. God should be at the center of all that you are. In everything, in all things, be dependent on Him and Him alone. Galatians 1, 6-9, KJV says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preaches any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Paul is saying here that if anyone comes to preach another doctrine, if any man comes to preach another religion that is different from the religion of Christ, you must reject it. If anyone tells you that you don't need God or anyone, you must leave them. This religion is everywhere, and it didn't just start today. A rich man in the Bible followed the religion of self, and he paid with his life. Luke 12, 19, 20, KJV says, And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? This man glorified himself. He said he had done everything by himself. Maybe he had been listening to motivational speakers telling him no one can help him but himself. Even if you run from point A to point B, laying up treasures for yourself, who made it possible for you to do that? No one other than God. Why are you praising yourself? Jesus says without him, you can do absolutely nothing. Look, don't let anyone deceive you. It is a waste to gather everything in the world and then end in hell. It is a wasted effort. What have you done for yourself if hellfire is where you will finish? How have you helped yourself? You can do nothing without God. David said his help comes from God above. Didn't say he could do it by himself or let the religion of self get into his head. He looked up to God for help. The religion of self is satanic, and many Christians are unaware of this. I want you to ask yourself, when is the last time you heard a sermon about dying to self? Yet, dying to self is a fundamental Christian doctrine. Galatians 2 part 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This verse by Apostle Paul signifies that by accepting Christ, believers symbolically die to their old sinful nature and live a new life in faith and obedience to Christ. Luke 9.23 says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily, and follow me. Here, 
Jesus emphasizes the need for self-denial and a willingness to endure hardship or persecution for his sake. Romans 6.6 6 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. This passage reflects the idea that Christians should renounce their former ways of living in sin and adopt a new life of righteousness. Death to self does not mean literal physical death, but rather a metaphorical death where one's selfishness, pride and sinful habits are sacrificed to live a life of humility, service and obedience to God. It is about putting God's will above one's own, leading to spiritual growth and a deeper relationship with God. This concept is central to Christian discipleship and is viewed as a path to true spiritual freedom and fulfillment. And this is the Christian faith, ladies and gentlemen. The Christian faith is one of total commitment, total submission, and total obedience to God. You cannot have one foot in and one foot out. Choose today that, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. No matter the cost, we will serve the Lord.